China has banned Taiwan's wax apple and sugar apple imports, putting pressure on Taiwan's fruit farmers. Stash Butler speaks with international relations expert Dr. Bryce Wakefield about AUKUS, a new security pact between the U.S., U.K., and Australia, and what it means for Taiwan. What is a sugar apple, and how do you eat one? We give it a try later on in the show. Finally, why did China stop importing the two fruits from Taiwan, and how is Taiwan reacting to the news? I'll go over that with you in hashtag Taiwan. This is Taiwan Insider. China is at it again. This week, they've banned sugar apples and wax apples from Taiwan, just like they banned pineapples in March. Most of Taiwan's fruit is consumed domestically, but China is the primary export market of quite a few of Taiwan's fruits, and that has a lot of fruit farmers worried. Taiwan could take this trade dispute to the WTO next month, but for now, the people of Taiwan and the government are pulling together. To support our local farmers, eight kilos of wax apples leave with a happy customer. In this rural district of Gaoshong City, the fruit is selling like hotcakes. One woman says she drove here to Liugui District from Tainan after hearing of China's import ban on sugar apples and wax apples. A local farmer says his so-called honey wind chime wax apples go mostly to China, but of course that's no longer possible, leaving bags of ripe wax apples on the trees. Farmers hope the government will step in. It won't be possible to find export markets quick enough to make up the shortfall, so online shopping, deliveries, and market stalls seem to be the best way forward. Growers here are busy taking orders and selling off hundreds of kilos of their crop. One farmer says she's touched by the flood of support. Gaosheng Mayor Chen Qimai says authorities will integrate the shopping platform of the Liugui Farmers Association with e-commerce sites. The city's wax apples account for 12% of Taiwan's total production. If patents here can be replicated elsewhere, markets should see this fruit flying off the shelves. In March, when China banned Taiwanese pineapples, it took the Taiwanese only four days to buy up what China buys up in a year. We also have the Japanese to thank. They increased Taiwanese fruit imports nearly 300% this year. For the first time in five years, Taiwan has seen more fruit exported to other countries than to China. And there's another group we need to thank: the Taiwanese diaspora. They may not live here in Taiwan, but they are having an impact. I recently spoke with a top official in charge of relations with the diaspora, Vice Minister of the Overseas Affairs Community Council, Roy Liu. I asked him what kind of role he thinks the Taiwanese diaspora play in Taiwan today. Most of the overseas Taiwanese, they care about Taiwan, and they um, they wanted to do something for Taiwan, such as when there is some kind of uh, a disaster which mm. we do not wish to see, and the people uh, around the world, the overseas compatriots, they will try to um, stand up. They will try to do something they can do to help the. The people back home, and also in the international community, they usually speak up for Taiwan. Mm. They wanted it to let the world hear the voice of Taiwan, and also let the world see Taiwan. So I think Taiwan is not lonely internationally. We have a strong backup force, strength to support Taiwan everywhere. So they play an important role、yes. for Taiwan in this world, we could say, right? I remember when we had our Freedom Pineapple campaign, when、mm-hmm. China suddenly banned the import of pineapples, you know, to China, Taiwanese pineapples, and there were a lot of Taiwanese associations abroad, you know, eager to buy our pineapples. That's very impressive.、Um, you know, there are two. I, I see two kinds of supporting for th- for this pineapple event. Uh, where they can they can import pineapple, the fresh fruit, such as、uh, in Australia, Canada, they bought a lot of the、uh, pineapple immediately, and then、uh, for some countries, which the fresh food is not still permitted to be imported, 
they will buy the、uh, the product of the dried、mm. fruit, and they show their care about Taiwan. No matter、uh, Taiwan is under any kind of pressure or any kind of、uh, uh, difficulty, they are still their heart is still with Taiwan. Stick around, because later on we're going to try to figure out how to eat a sugar apple. But next up, we're going to tell you more about AUKUS, a new security pact that could have a big impact on Taiwan. The U.S., the U.K., and Australia have launched a new strategic partnership in the Indo-Pacific region. It's got its own acronym too, AUKUS. Now, Australia and the United States have gone on record to say that Taiwan is one of its most important partners in the region. So, what implications does AUKUS carry for Taiwan? Well, Stash Butler spoke with Australian international relations expert Dr. Bryce Wakefield to find out more. AUKUS is a partnership that's based around the Indo-Pacific region, and I mean, for many countries, it's you know Taiwan is explicitly part and an important part of that Indo-Pacific region. What does AUKUS mean for Taiwan? Well, what it means for Taiwan is what it means for Australia. Um, and that's that. These Australian subs that、uh, we will apparently receive in twenty years or so、um, will change the strategic posture of、um, Australia because、um, the subs that Australia has on order from the French, which they're cancelling,、um, are、uh, conventional subs, which are which are shorter range. They're more equipped to、um, defend the area around Australia, but with these longer range subs. What it'll mean is that Australia can support,、uh, particularly uh, U.S. Uh, operations in places like the South China Sea and、um, East China Seas, and that op- has obvious implications、uh, for operations surrounding Taiwan. I mean, you you mention、uh, France's reaction to this, and you know they've reacted very angrily to the news of the partnership and the cancellation of their. Submarine deal with、uh, Australia, calling it a stab in the back.、Um, what's the next step for France in terms of reviving its Indo-Pacific strategy, and and how might Taiwan figure in those plans for France? Well, as you've mentioned, France is enraged, and、uh, to some degree, the the rage that France is expressing at the moment is quite understandable. The French have stated that the the AUKUS arrangements came as a sudden shock; that they were never informed, and the Australian government has confirmed that they rang the French、uh, at eight thirty the night before the the public announcement. Now. Frankly, this is no way to treat an ally. The, the diplomacy is sloppy here. From the point of view in Indo, of Indo-Pacific security,、um, this is this is not good news. It、uh, it, it, it causes、um, tension among allies who would usually be advocating for a free and open Indo-Pacific, including、um, the area around Taiwan, the South China Sea. And、uh, yeah, causes divisions where, frankly, there didn't really need to be any. This could have been handled in a much defter way. I don't think this is too risky for Taiwan, but the fact that Western allies who are committed to notions like the rules-based international order have been committed to the Indo-Pacific, the fact that these allies are arguing can't be a positive development for Taiwan either. Now, the, the day after the August announcement, the foreign and defence ministers of the U.S. and Australia issued a joint statement that spells out an intent to strengthen ties with Taiwan, which they call a leading democracy and a critical partner for both countries. And, and that comes after Australian exports to Taiwan have also, you know, grown dramatically,、uh, particularly in the last five years. Could we be beginning to see、uh, a golden era in Australia-Taiwan ties? Yeah, certainly.、Um, while I, I'd hesitate to call it a golden era, you're certainly seeing much more attention paid to、uh, Taiwan in Australia, and that's really as a result of the rise of China and frictions between the PRC and Australia. Taiwan figures much more into Australia's strategic calculations, and as a result, you do get people focusing a lot more on.、Um, Not necessarily the nitty gritty of Taiwanese politics and society, but certainly the notion that Taiwan is、um, a democracy and shares very,、uh, very many of the norms and standards that、uh, that that Australia and its allies do.
Next up, Leslie explains Taiwan's latest fruit-related drama in Hashtag Taiwan. Do you guys remember Freedom Pineapples? Well, if you don't, here's a bit of a refresher. In March, China banned the import of Taiwanese pineapples, citing pest problems. Before the ban, a majority of Taiwanese pineapple exports went to China. Taiwanese officials said that 99% of exported pineapples passed inspections, so they thought that the ban was bogus. But Taiwan had enough faith in its pineapples that it said, Fine, China, don't take our pineapples. We'll find another place for them. The campaign was a success with people in Taiwan and places like South Korea and Japan buying up all the excess pineapple stock. Now, a similar thing is happening with these two fruits. Do you know what they are? Well, if you don't, don't worry, because odds are if you don't live in a tropical climate, then you've never seen one of these weird looking fruits. One is a wax apple, the other is a sugar apple, also known as a custard apple. These are two popular fruits Taiwan is known for. So on Sunday, China suddenly banned wax apple and sugar apple imports from Taiwan. The ban was to take effect on Monday at 9 a.m., giving farmers less than 24 hours notice that one of their largest markets was closed off. China said it detected mealybugs in wax apple and sugar apple shipments from Taiwan. Okay, but here's the thing though. In the first half of 2021, China notified Taiwan that it found mealybugs in 13 sugar apple shipments and 6 wax apple shipments. Okay, that's fair. But there were no reports of mealybugs in July and August, the two months leading up to this latest ban. In response, Taiwan's Council of Agriculture said China provided no scientific evidence for the first mealybug reports. Furthermore, before the ban, Taiwan told China it updated its agriculture regulations to include more rigorous tests for sugar apples. So some authorities think that China's ban is a way to put an economic squeeze on Taiwan. Around 90% of Taiwan's sugar apple and wax apple exports go to China, so fruit farmers are once again facing the problem of too much stock with no place to go. This time around though, Taiwan is equipped with its freedom pineapple experience, so another campaign kicked off, this time helping Taiwan's sugar apple and wax apple farmers. Government officials posted to social media encouraging people to purchase domestic wax apples and sugar apples. This time though, instead of freedom pineapples, we're looking at freedom fruit. Though I do think the hashtag missed an opportunity with freedom apples. No matter pine wax or sugar, Taiwan's only got good apples. You see agriculture ministry, it's not that hard for me. Just Give me a call next time. Taiwan's various farmers are posting their goods online and taking orders which are quickly selling out. Even Taiwan's agriculture minister is showcasing wax apple goods on his social media page that people can buy. Pingtung County Magistrate Pan Meng An, whose county produces a lot of wax apples, even showed off the different kinds of wax apples people can try. Now look, it's fair if China wants to ban Taiwan's agriculture exports based on poor quality, but everything we've seen so far gives us room to doubt. Either way, Taiwan's fruits are looking for a new market, so be on the lookout because you might just find wax apples and sugar apples at your local supermarket soon. Now before we try our hand at eating one of these, a sugar apple, here's a look at some of the other news stories that are on our radar. Taiwan has applied to join the Comprehensive and Progressive Agreement for Trans-Pacific Partnership, or CPTPP. This pact is one of the largest, and most difficult to pronounce, trade agreements in existence. But Taiwan's acceptance is far from certain. First, there's the issue of its ban on food products from parts of Japan affected by the Fukushima nuclear disaster. Japan is already in the agreement, and before it gives the green light for Taiwan to join, Japan may well want to resolve the issue. Then there's the fact that China recently applied to join the trade deal as well. Taiwan has started giving the BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine to kids aged 12 to 17. It's the first time minors are being vaccinated, and just in time, as the school year kicks into full gear. When was the last time a government minister in your country danced for your amusement? Well, it's all in a day's work for Taiwan's digital minister, Audrey Tang. Tang recently took to the floor in a video encouraging people to take advantage of the newest COVID-19 economic stimulus vouchers. It seems to have worked. The voucher application website crashed on its first day. Cats are notoriously picky eaters, but apparently the pupae of the domesticated silkworm get the feline seal of approval. That's what one agricultural research center in Taiwan is claiming anyway. The center has developed a canned cat food made from these immature insects, and researchers say there's a good reason to try it out on your cat. Eating these bugs is supposed to eliminate foul odors in your kitty's litter box. 
Now at the top of our show, we promised you we're gonna show you how to eat one of these uh, custard apples or actually sugar apples. I think we should start off with a wax apple. Okay, it's because a little easier. That's it's easier. A, it's a little milder too, so. Okay. If we, um, these are delicious. So these we've had pretty Very cut. juicy. We don't need to yeah. uh, worry too this much about This is just pop them these. and go. They're very sweet and very juicy. Mm. A lot of water. They're good for quenching your thirst if you need to. Mm. Mm. I don't, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely heavy on the water. Right? Yeah, it's definitely mm. kind of like quite a water, no, you know, yeah, like you said, very juicy, watery fruit. Not very, not like a super strong flavor. But My mm. grandma used to love to cut these up and yeah. just like toss them at me, so. Oops. I, I am a connoisseur of these wax <laughs> apples, I might say. What I'm not a connoisseur of those is this right here. Yeah, I'm gonna get into this. I, and, uh, I, um, I this don't is very know. intriguing. I mean, what do you do? Cut it open, well, tear it open? Well, you know, here's the thing. So there's many like little grooves to it, right? And funny, fun fact, they're also called a Buddha head fruit. Right. Because it looks like a Buddha's head. That's what I was gonna say, you know. Looks um, like a Buddha. <laughs> so the thing about custard apples is, um, it's a little they're a little firm right now right these are a little firm yeah and over time they're supposed to soften up and there's like a little window of softness where they're perfect to be like cut open or worked open oh. but like it's like a day or two and if you uh -oh. miss that window they almost become mushy what right. about this one then? i feel like we're a bit early with these we're I'm a bit not, earlier oh. i'm not, I'm not it an expert well. <laughs> does uh -oh. it as well it doesn't be, open. It probably means this will be less messy than it, it could well have been. So how I, was, how I was taught was just like, you just kind of like go in, because this is where the grooves of the fruits are, right? You, you just, just gotta, gonna... You just gotta like go into it, right? You just gotta, you see? So I I'm got just, a little bit of I'm skin right here. You're supposed to open it up like in half, right? You can open it up in half, but oh, it's oh, too oh, hard. Oh, i yeah, not just, strong enough for this. These are not quite as ripe yet, because usually they'll just fall apart. <laughs> it's sweet, it's sweet. It's not as sweet as like, as when it would be like at that peak ripeness, but it, a lot of seeds it's in there as well. Way. A lot of seeds. You see the black little spots right there? A lot of seeds. What, what, that's what's going on in there. Okay, what so I'm, you get the idea. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that is how you eat a custard apple or a sugar apple. Um, I don't think we have to teach you how to eat the wax apple. You just basically cut and go. But we hope this was as educational as it was for you as it was for us. Now for the final question of the week, I'd like to ask you guys, now that you've tasted custard apple, or kind of tasted custard <laughs> apple, and wax apple, what would you do with it if you had to cook with it? Like you can bake, you can fricassee, however you'd like to do it. Stash? Uh, well mine's not so much cooking as sort of putting it with stuff, and that thing is yogurt. Oh, that's a good that idea. sounds pretty so healthy. I think just kind of like, you know, mix it all together with some, uh, you know, passion fruit, mango maybe, Ooh. some other kind of... Taiwanese tropical, kind of tropical Taiwanese fruits, fruits, yeah. A little Taiwan bowl over there for yeah, you. Yeah, a little Taiwan Sounds bowl for me. Good. All right, that's pretty good. Natalie? What about a sugar apple pie Ooh. with some ice cream on top? <laughs> That, that sounds sound good. That sounds very good. In fact, Natalie, it's so good that I always had the same line of thinking. That we could put sugar apple in Ooh. cheesecake. Ooh. And Yum. I think the flavors would meld quite well together. I mean, wax that apple, a yeah. little too watery, I think. Possibly, yeah. For dairy-based cheesecake. But uh, that's what I would do with the sugar apple or the wax apple. What would you do with the sugar apple or wax apple? Let us know in the comments below. Anyway, that's it for today's show. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Leslie Leo. I'm Stash Butler. And I am Natalie So. Make sure to follow us on our social media channels. Yes, leave a comment below. We'd we'll love to hear from you. Uh, don't forget to tweet at us. Our handle is Taiwan Insider. Until next week, guys, try and find those wax apples. See you around.